Hey guys, I've been out for a drive and I've just sort of been reflecting on the past year and it's been a really big year. So I thought I would do a little video and just sort of tie up a few loose ends from 2019, just talk about big things that happened in the year. And then I also want to talk a little bit about the new year, 2020, some things I'm excited for, some things that I'm sort of considering, and then also a few things that I learned this past year that I want to apply in the new year. Okay, guys, so first of all, 2019 was a huge year for me in a lot of different ways. In terms of the YouTube channel, it more than doubled in subscriber count. I looked back at my analytics, and at the beginning of 2019, I had around 36,000. And now, coming into 2020, I've got over 75,000. So, huge improvement there. I'm really encouraged by that. And I feel like I learned so much from last year in terms of just how to make more interesting videos and make videos that people will enjoy. And other things, uh, as far as promotion, just ways that I can grow the channel. So, I'm thinking I, I want to set my goal for 2022 to make the same difference at least again. So, I want to at least double the size of the channel again. So that'll be up to, you know, more than 150,000 by next year. But I'm really trying to shoot high, so I, I want that to be the minimum that I reach. Another big change in 2019 was a big sort of shift in my kind of business priorities when it comes to music. Uh, now, YouTube is absolutely my main focus, and it's what I spend the bulk of my time doing. I mean, YouTube is basically my full-time job now. And I still do record music and do a few live shows uh, and other things like that, but definitely YouTube, I mean, I just, I got so much traction, and I was able to make so much progress last year on YouTube. I mean, that really seems like the obvious path forward for me. Some other really cool specific things happened, like I went on that trip uh, to Germany. That was back in June. That was over to the uh, the Toman Gearhead University event. I mean, that was really, really cool. It was great to collaborate with some other YouTubers over there and just, you know, uh, meet some of those people that I'd only seen on YouTube before, get to talk with them and, and sort of pick their brain on different things. And then, of course, see all of the really cool instruments uh, over at Toman and, you know, and just check things out in Germany too, because I'd never been to Germany before. So that whole trip was really cool. Now, another thing that happened, and this is not one particular thing, but just sort of a situation that kept coming up again and again throughout the year, was these sort of win-win situations where I would make a video and then the company, you know, whatever company it was, well, I'll give you guys an example, like the Wolf and AIO brand, those guitars. Those are really, really cool guitars. And those videos just were successes in so many different ways. For one, the videos themselves have been really, really popular. A lot of people watched them, a lot of people enjoyed them. But then the other part of that is I got tons and tons of emails from people. This is just throughout the year as I've done these different videos. I get tons and tons of these emails of people telling me, hey, I saw your video on this guitar, I bought the guitar, and I absolutely love it. And because I have this great instrument, now I'm practicing more and I'm, you know, I'm enjoying playing guitar again or something like that. I've gotten so many of those messages throughout this year. And so it's, it's like, uh, you know, my videos do well. A company that is bringing a good product to the market, the company does well. And the people who get the instruments, they do well. Everybody wins. I love those win-win situations. And there have been so many of those throughout 2019. Now, another thing that happened last year that I, I want to talk about, and this is sort of, you know, what I said in the beginning, some sort of unfinished business or wrap up some loose ends. This is the thing I was really thinking of. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you probably remember that I had a pretty serious injury to my left arm uh, back in April of 2019. And I basically, I tore my left bicep tendon. It was a complete tear, and so the tendon that attaches the bicep to my arm down by my elbow that tore completely off the bone in my forearm and so I had to have surgery on it and I talked a little bit about this at the time I haven't talked about it too much since then I after all that stuff happened uh, I didn't want to make too big of a deal out of it I kind of felt it was sort of like pandering for people's sympathy and that kind of thing um, and there were some sort of uh, I don't want to say sketchy moments, but some things I was really nervous about because that happened in April 
Then I had that big trip to the Tomon event over in Germany in June. And there was a period of about two months right after the surgery where I couldn't play guitar at all. I mean, at first I had my arm in a cast and all this stuff. And so I was pretty nervous at that time if I would be healed up enough in time for that trip where I could actually play guitar on the trip. Fortunately, I was, but I only had a, a window of about two weeks where I was able to play guitar again and then practice before I went on that trip. It did uh, just barely end up working out, but you know, the trip went great. I was able to play guitar okay. And uh, today, where my arm is now, the, uh, the tendons and all of that stuff has, has completely healed. I was very fortunate in that I had a really great doctor uh, who worked on the arm. I want to give him a shout out, Dr. Anthony DiGiacomo at Kaiser Permanente. Uh, he did just a flawless repair job on my arm. So the tendon itself is completely healed. I do have a pin in my arm that'll just be there forever that attaches the tendon uh, to the bone in my forearm. And I had about, I don't know, six months actually off from the gym, uh, which was mentally a little tough for me, but I got back into the gym now. And so now I'm in the process of, of just regaining the, the muscle strength that I lost during that whole time. But that's going really well in general and I just feel really good about it. And I'm, I'm just happy to have that whole thing behind me. Later on in, in 2019, I was able to do a really fun music video for the song Death on the Iron Mountain, which some of you have probably already seen on here. And I was able to shoot that video uh, with an old high school buddy of mine, Matt Boyer, up in uh, my home state of Washington. So that was a lot of fun, and I was happy with how the song came out and all that stuff. As we've gotten to the end of 2019, I'm just really happy with how everything has gone this year. I mean, the channel has done really well. Uh, I've had some big changes in my my personal schedule where my time is a lot more flexible like in a way I'm in a way I'm busier but I'm able to control my own schedule a lot more and just like as an example um, I can go you know I can kind of go visit my mom anytime I want with, you know and she lives like in a completely different state than I do I'm sure you guys are familiar with that feeling that as your parents get older you want to visit them more and um, at least in the case of my mom, that's something I've been able to do, so I've been really happy about that. Okay, now like I said, 2019 was a really great year for me, but I also learned some really valuable lessons. And I also um, sort of experienced a thing where lessons that I had learned earlier were even more reinforced this past year. So let me go over a, a few things that I learned. Um, I think, you know, one super important thing is that I think we should all try to be more open to changing your path or maybe be open to changing your idea of what success looks like. So how this worked for me was that for years and years, I mean, I was living in LA, I mean, I still live in LA, but I was living in LA as a guitar player trying to make it in, you know, the touring circuit and playing in bands and, and recording music and that kind of stuff. And I you know, I did some really cool things. I mean, I, I did go on some tours, played on some albums, all, all this stuff. You guys are probably already uh, aware of these things. But um, I, o over time, I, I started meeting people who had what I originally thought was the success that I wanted. Like, I, they were people that I thought were examples of like, well, the, you know, these guys are on tour, they play all the time, they played on these big albums. In some cases, these were like older guys who had uh, decades-long careers that they'd done. But then I looked at these guys, and, you know, I got to know some of them, and so many of them were really just not happy and not in a good place in their life. And, and I'm not trying to... This is really important here. It's not that these people did anything wrong or there's anything wrong with them. They were or they are very successful in a certain way. But it was just I was originally confused about what success really looked like. And I had been locked in to this one mindset where it's like, you know, I have to do this. And if I do that, then that makes me successful or something like that. And I couldn't deviate from that because uh, in my head, it's like, well, if I did anything other than that, then no matter how happy I was, I still wasn't successful in the way I thought of it. But basically what happened is over the last couple of years, I met other people 
who gave me different examples of what success could look like. And the big difference was that these people were actually really in a good place in their lives and really were, were happy and fulfilled with what they were doing. And sort of having those other examples just sort of opened my eyes up to the idea that, no, there are, there are different paths to being happy. You know, there are different paths you can take to being successful. And so I think a mistake I was making for a long, long time was thinking that there was only one way or there was only one path forward for me that would lead to me being happy and fulfilled and, and successful. Okay, now another thing that I learned in 2019 that relates to that first point is the importance of having a long-term plan. I know a lot of other people have talked about this, but here's the thing. How do you know if you're making progress towards something if you don't know what that thing is that you're making progress towards? In terms of my YouTube channel, it can be super easy, right? Like I can set a solid number of subscribers or views or, or something like that. And I can say, okay, I want to have a half a million subscribers by this time. Then once you know your end goal, you can work backwards from that and figure out the steps that you need to do in order to reach that goal. But if you don't have a really clear cut, solid goal that you're working towards, figuring out what to do next just in your life is, is really, really difficult. And I think if you don't have a clear goal, a clear long-term goal that you're working towards, just structuring your day-to-day -day life in a way that's productive is actually really, really difficult. And you just end up sort of just kind of wandering through your day. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this thing where you meet someone and they just seem like they, they just want to be entertained by life. They don't really want to accomplish anything or create anything. They just want to go through life and like sort of find the next TV show that's going to entertain them. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad way to live your life, although you're not really going to get much done that way. But if you're the kind of person that does want to accomplish things and does want to achieve things and you find yourself living that other kind of life where you're, you're just not really getting anything done in life, I think the problem probably is that you don't have a clear long-term goal that you're trying to work towards. Okay, now the last thing, and, and again, this is another thing that was sort of, I learned earlier on, but it was really strongly reinforced in 2019. And that is the idea that uh, you should embrace failure. Don't take failure personally. Don't take it as a sense of, uh, you know, it's not something that devalues you. But you should embrace failure and you should always be seeking to improve yourself. Just accept that you're not perfect, but at the same time, strive for perfection. Obviously, on YouTube, there's always going to be uh, negative comments, right, in the comment section. People, you know, they don't like you for whatever reason, or they just want to say something negative. But some of the negative things people say towards you, some of them are actually going to be true. Not all of them, and maybe not even most of them, but some of them will be true. Here's a great example. When I first started uh, kind of building my channel up like a couple years ago, I had a pretty long intro on all my videos. And the intro was made up mostly of pictures of me like doing different things, like you know, a picture of me playing guitar. Here's a picture of me like soldering something, this kind of stuff. Well, uh, in retrospect, it was a lame intro. Okay, of course it's like, oh, well, I think it's cool because it's a bunch of pictures of me. But people didn't like the intro. And I got a bunch of negative comments about it. But the thing is, those those were accurate. I mean, it was a bad intro. And it's like, okay, so I failed at making that intro. I made a bad intro. And when I got rid of that intro and I went to the nice, uh, quick, short one that I have now, my videos and my content improved, right? But if you're never willing to acknowledge that you didn't do something well or you, you tried and then you failed, it, if you're never willing to acknowledge that, it, it basically makes it impossible to learn from your mistakes and then uh, improve yourself as, as you go forward. So obviously I'm still making mistakes every day, uh, but I don't, I don't see it as a bad thing. I just see it as, as learning experiences. Okay, now real quick here, I just wanna wrap this up about a few things that might happen in 2020. I did a, a post on YouTube about this a little while ago, but I'm probably going to start a second channel 
because I, I love the Guitar Max channel. I'm absolutely going to continue that with you know what I'm doing on Guitar Max. But I do have some ideas for other videos that don't quite fit uh, on the channel, and I don't want to dilute the content that's already there. So I'll probably do a bigger announcement about that in a few weeks or maybe a month. But I think it's still stuff that you guys would really like, even if it's not something that would necessarily fit on the Guitar Max channel. Also, guys, I'm actually considering going back to school uh, in that I just want to sort of further my education, not for any career goals, but just more for personal enrichment. I always like learning things, learning new things, or learning more about something that I'm already interested in. So I'm sort of, I'm tossing around a few ideas in my head, trying to decide what I would like to study. And, uh, you know, again, I might make uh, another video about that uh, a little bit further on. The other big thing is we're getting into the new year, 2020 now, and the NAM show is coming up, a uh, big convention for all the new music gear in Anaheim that they have every, every January down there. So I'm really looking forward to that. Of course, I'm going to be covering that. I'm going to be checking out all the new gear. And, uh, and I think it's going to be a really uh, exciting year for guitars and amps and pedals and all that fun stuff. All right, guys, I hope this wasn't too long-winded, but I just, you know, like I said earlier, I wanted to wrap up a few things. A lot of people were asking about whatever happened with my arm and, and how that healed up. But um, those are just sort of my thoughts about 2019 and the new year coming up. I would love to hear how 2019 was for you guys. So if you have anything that you accomplished in 2019 that you're really proud of or, or just something you want to share with us, uh, you know, please leave it in the comments section below. I would love to read about that stuff. All right, guys, that's it for now. I hope you had a great year, and I hope 2020 is going to be awesome for you guys. See you then.